September 15th. That by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation, who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters into that within the veil, where the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus. Hebrews 6, 17-19 The hope of heaven fostered by an unrenewed mind is baseless and illusory. There exists not a single element of goodness in its nature. It is the conception of a mind at enmity with God. It is the delusion of a heart in covenant with death and in agreement with hell. It is the treacherous beacon that decoys the too confiding but deluded voyager to the rock-bound shore. Unscriptural, unreal, and baseless, it must eventually cover its possessor with shame and confusion of face. But not such is the believer's hope. Begotten with his second nature, the inbreathing of the Spirit of God, an element of renewed mind, and based upon the atonement of the Savior. It must be essentially a good cleansed from moral impurity, not in the level of baptism, but with the blood of Christ, justified not by the ritual of Moses, but by the righteousness of the incarnate God, sanctified not by sacramental grace, falsely so called, but by the in-being of the Holy Spirit. The believer's hope of heaven is as well-founded as the throne of the eternal. Moreover, it is a good hope through grace. The first and the last lesson we learn in our Christian course is that by grace we are saved. Lord, do you require of me one thought of stainless purity, one throb of perfect love, one deed of unsullied holiness upon which shall hinge my everlasting happiness? Then I am lost forever. But since you have provided a righteousness that justifies me from all things, that frees me from all condemnation, and since this righteousness is your free, unpurchased gift, the bestowment of sovereign grace, I clasp to my trembling yet believing heart the joyous hope this truth inspires. It is a blessed hope, looking for that blessed hope. Its object is most blessed. The heaven it compasses is that blissful place where the holy ones who have fled from our embrace are reposing in the bosom of the Savior. They are the blessed dead. The day of their death was to them better than the day of their birth. The one was the introduction to all sorrow. The other is a translation to all joy. Blessed hope, the hope of being forever with the Lord, no more to grieve the spirit that so often and so soothingly comforted our hearts, no more to wound the gentle bosom that so often pillowed our head, no more to journey in darkness, nor bend as a bruised reed before each blast of temptation, to be a pillar in the temple of God, to go no more out forever. And what a sanctifying hope is it! This, to the spiritual mind, is the most acceptable and elevating feature. Every man that has this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. It detaches from earth and allures to heaven. Never does it glow more brightly in the soul, nor kindle around the path a luster more heavenly than when it strengthens in the believer a growing conformity of character to that heaven towards which it soars. It is, in a word, a sure hope. Shall the worm undermine it? Shall the tempest shake it? Shall the waters extinguish it? Never. It saves us. It keeps, preserves, and sustains us amid the perils and depressions of our earthly pilgrimage. And having borne us through the flood, it will not fail us when the last surge lands upon the shore of eternity.